Japan's studio was a special place. While many other game publishers chased profits, Japan's studio had the privilege of being able to make creative decisions with the full backing of Sony. As a first party developer, their job was just to make PlayStation look good, to stretch the platform and show off its capabilities. The company never really had blockbuster hits, but in the words of Sean Layden, It wasn't a multi-million seller, but that's not the point. In 1999, they hired Silent Hill director Keicho Toyama, putting him to work on a PlayStation exclusive horror series titled Siren, creating a team with which he could create more. But in fact, he didn't necessarily want to just make horror games, and really the first game he ever wanted to make was one where you explore a world by manipulating gravity. Usually at Japan Studio, the company requests that directors create a certain kind of game, but by 2008, he'd built up enough experience to pitch his own idea instead. Gravity Rush. He first had the idea when reading Mobius's The Incal and wanted to represent that feeling of falling and verticality within a video game. And because Japan Studio was pretty chill about that, they let him get to work. This video and the work that went into it was made possible due to a sponsorship from Raid Shadow Legends. This is an ambitious mobile game that seeks to bring a console gaming experience to handheld devices, and as of last year, PC as well. And I'm going to take a bit of time to talk about the game's design and animation. Links to download the game are in the description, or you can scan this on-screen QR code. I've been asked to talk about two of the game's champions, and so since this is a channel about design and animation, I want to quickly talk about the designs of two of the game's lizard men, Virgum Carr and Roxam. Roxam is aggressive in form, colour and costume, while Virgum Carr is a honking support unit strapped with swords and shields that he couldn't possibly use. And this matters because it makes these champions feel distinctive and lets you project personality onto them, and so when you bring them into battle, there's almost a sense of pride to watching them tear apart your enemies. Two kinds of storytelling, the game's story and your own personal tale. The game has plenty of new summer events with new champions giving these animation and design teams more chances to explore new ideas. New players can hit the link in the description within 30 days and be able to get their epic hero Chonaru, 200k silver, an XP boost, energy refill and an ancient shard which you can use to try and get a lizard man for yourself. <laughs> Getting the game greenlit was the easy part, the hard part was determining what this game would actually be. And while Sony was pretty hands off, the release of the PS Vita meant that they needed to readjust halfway through development, since they were originally making it for the PS3. For an open world title, Gravity Rush was created by a remarkably small team, but they managed to get away with it by assigning visionary artists to create a game with a limited, yet unique scope. French comics or bande dessinée were an influence for every creator, drawing upon the work of Mobius in particular. Some have compared the similarities between the visuals of the Gravity Rush series and Studio Ghibli's Nausicaa, and that entirely makes sense. They both cite Mobius as a huge inspiration. As a callback to the game's European roots, the city of Hexaville is based on an amalgamation of different cities across the continent. And while game worlds are usually developed around gameplay, in this case it was art first. They created the world with all its different districts, and only then did they think about the way the player would interact with it. It is clunky, but what this ensures is that it's a world that feels worth exploring. It doesn't feel like it's designed for you, but rather for the residents of this floating city whose day you're about to ruin. This is an animation spotlight though, and so what I want to really focus on is the character we control. At first, they were just using a character model from Siren to test out the tech, but it was the main character that would be able to bring everything together, from the story to the animation to the mechanics. And to achieve that, they asked an Ape Escape animator. Even when he's illustrating, everything about Shunsuke Saito's work is defined by motion. His first job in the industry was Ape Escape, which he worked on while studying part-time. From there, he worked on the graphics and animation for plenty of Japan Studios games up until Gravity Rush came up. 
This was his first time working with Toyama's team, but he started work on not just creating the main character Cat, but also a concept video that would establish what the team was going for. In many ways, Cat is Saito's magnum opus, and an excellent example of how important a character designer can be. Firstly, while many have theorised her to be based on the Gangura fashion of the 90s, that's not the case. Cat has dark skin, blonde hair and red eyes. Saito used these features to establish the narrative that she's a a foreigner within this floating European town. Next, there's her clothes and hair. The game has you constantly turning about, so there needed to be an indication of the direction of gravity. To achieve that, she has long hair and a ninja-like scarf. In fact, so many characters in Gravity Rush have long hair that he was called out on it by the time they got to Gravity Rush 2 and he was forced to make a short-haired character for it. But even that's just the beginning. There was a worry in 2008 that an anime-style character wouldn't be able to appeal to US audiences. Of course, America's filled with weebs now, but that wasn't as true back then, and so they made an active effort to avoid anime tropes in the comic sections, right down to facial expressions that are exclusively used in anime or manga. That was the their intent, at least, to create a game that felt more European than Japanese, but instead it's somewhat of a fusion, with Kat herself also being a blend of styles. In games, especially 3D games, a character designer is often just that. But Shunsuke Saito took the role to an entirely different level. Not only did he also model Cat, but he is the animator for her as well. And so the concept video that explained how this game would work was almost entirely defined by him. This is a level of congruity that you only really see in anime, where the character designer will also serve as chief animation director. But in this case, it meant that Saito never needed to convey his ideas to an anime. He would just do it himself, and not through motion capture, but instead entirely by hand. If you look back at his tweets at the time, he was having the time of his life. He's someone who practices kung fu in his spare time, and so guess how Cat ends up fighting? When it came to Gravity Rush 2, he was able to explore his passions further, with the introduction of the Jupiter and Lunar fighting styles, along with plenty of other visual improvements, which he was able to handle as the newly appointed art director for the game. Jiga Parallel is an honour to explore, with its exciting verticality separating culture and class, while Cat's animations look better than ever. During early development of Gravity Rush, Saito was exploring options for creating impacts that still felt safe. Smooth. A lot of games use a technique called hit stop, where the action will stop for a brief moment so you feel like you made an impact. But Saito thought this wouldn't work for Gravity Rush, and so instead he uses effects and the backwards reaction of Cat to make each hit feel impactful. And of course now with Jupiter and Lunar Stars, the way he defines impact is different as well, all while keeping things smooth and not dropping frames. It's yet another thing that makes the series unique from a lot of other Japanese action games. I mentioned before that they were avoiding the anime look, but that relaxed over time, especially when it came to actually making a Gravity Rush anime and manga. The anime titled Overture and Bridging the Two Games was created at Studio Kara and animated by the Evangelion 3D team. These are incredibly talented artists, and they had the help of Studio Trigger's Akira Amamiya, so the Gravity Rush team basically let them do whatever they wanted with it. And the result is kind of fantastic. It's nothing like the game at all, and it basically breaks every single one of Shinsuke Saito's aesthetic rules. But that's, once again, not the point. If you want to see artists at their best, then let them tell you what they want to do instead of the other way around. Gravity Rush is a game that's beloved by artists and game creators more than anyone, because it's an incredible example of innovation in both art and design. PlayStation's technical consultant Mark Cerny specifically recommended it during an interview. Keiichiro Toyama could have only made a game like Gravity Rush at Japan Studio. It's a company that prioritises Japanese game art above all else. 
And so even though Gravity Rush never sold all that well, it got a remaster and it got a sequel. And after finishing that, Toyama spoke about wanting to create a new horror title. But that's something he'll have to do at his new Bokke game studio instead. Japan's studio as a creative house for multiple teams is no more. Instead, Astrobot's team Asobi is being folded into PlayStation Worldwide Studios, while the rest of the creator's contracts did not get renewed. According to sources familiar with the situation, this is apparently a part of PlayStation's initiative to move resources towards the successful blockbusters instead of the more niche creative ventures which strengthened the overall brand. In 2019, Toyama said that he thought Sony greenlit the game because as a music company, they still had that artistic mindset, where they want to give people a chance to show what they're capable of. But today, without Japan studio advocates in the higher up positions, like former Worldwide Studios president and CEO Shuhei Yoshida and Sean Layden respectively, all they see is a bunch of artists that aren't making the global mega corporation any money. Thanks for watching The Canapro Effect.